Hi and welcome to the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment's television series Bridges where we share with you programs, opportunities and activities and I am your host Liam paris Boyd. This week we're coming to you from the home of the Daphne Joseph Hackett Theatre, Queen's Park, Constitution Road, St. Michael. This location recently held the graduation ceremony of the Youth Achieving Results, Performing and Visual Arts Programme. But first, let's take a look at the Community Independent Celebration Secretariat. What is it and how you can get involved? The Community Independent Celebration Secretariat encourages community participation through the Parish Independence Committees, also called the PIC. A committee is established in each parish with the primary objective of achieving maximum community participation in the independent celebrations. The committees are responsible for the encouragement and promotion of activities within their parishes, particularly in their parish month and November, to bring about an awareness of independence and nation building. These activities are a reflection of unique aspects of each parish. The PIC is comprised of a 10-body member of volunteers who serve for two years. The body includes the chairperson, deputy chairperson, public relations officer, treasurer, secretary assistant, secretary treasurer, and four floor members. The PIC must collaborate with the Community Independent Celebration Secretariat and be prepared to take the initiative to coordinate, organize, and conceptualize parish activities. They carry out activities like the discovery of new talent through shows, conceptualization and coordination of November activities, working with other volunteers and community groups, and the implementation of parish projects. We take a walk down memory lane with the 2021 Most Outstanding Ambassadors, and we hear about their visit to England earlier this year. I, d I don't know if we can still find a word to describe how we felt, Shaquille, honestly. I mean, there there is... There's the feeling, yes, we believe that we have done well. But there was never that, y'all got this, don't worry about nobody else attitude from our attendant and from our PIC. And I think that has prepared, that prepared us for anything at that point in time. Um, however, the process of elimination, so you hear one name get called, you hear the next parish get called, and really, what am I call me yet? And then you hear second, and then when your name is called, I honestly sat in my seat for about what, two, two seconds, probably five seconds, almost a minute, in shock, honestly. I mean, it's not that you didn't expect greatness, but given, expecting it and then receiving it is something different. So then to hear your name be called, and then I look at Shaki, Shaki, you. And Shaki look back at me, and I'm like, Shaki, you can feel that? Like, the feeling I still cannot put into one word. I cannot describe it in words. It was just something phenomenal, for the lack of a better word, honestly. And to go down there and stand next to the minister and receive your award, and still yet not be able to put into words the feelings that you're feeling. I think that in itself is an explanation of the excitement, the, the drive, the rush, all of that coming together. I mean, it was more or less, yes, we did well. Spoke to Pearson after Pearson asked me, um, how, were you, how did you keep so calm? <laughs> But that's because he was just seeing the outside <laughs> <laughs> on the inside of my head. It was jumping and celebrations and fireworks and everything going on in there all at once. Like the said, we, we even missed the um the fireworks. The fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> so just we were right there celebrating and paused up for a minute. By the time we got to the stage, the fireworks on the stage were, were running out. Zena Brooms and Shaquille Griffith represented the parish of St. Lucie with pride showcasing the best of St. Lucie throughout the competition. The St. Lucie team took home the attendant of the year with Pedro Comabach, took first place in the public speaking presentation, placed second in the parish project of the year, and also took home the entrepreneur award of the year. 
It was an amazing experience and the team finally got to travel to England a couple months ago as part of their winnings in 2021. Going to London, England was a good experience. Um, we enjoyed it, we made the most of it, we embraced it. We got to interact with the diaspora. Um, we went to the consulate um, in, in London. We visited, the, um, we met some lovely ladies there as well, um, Natalie and, and Amanda. Very, they were very accommodating for us. And the entire thing there. Um, we also would have been to the, 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 the Buckingham Palace. We also enjoyed the, um, the museum as well down there. We had a long walk in, in the area as well. So we, we embraced the entire experience from start to finish uh, because for us it was first time for all of us. And then the chance to see somewhere else and see how Barbados operate overseas from the ambassadorial perspective was really good for us and this ambassador as well. Um, so we certainly embraced that opportunity. Um, and we stayed nearby there as well and that really was easy and we made the most of it. We, made the most of it. we had a chance to be interviewed um, by the local Barbadian newspaper over there that was featured sometime back in January, yes. And so we, we had a, a grand time. We, we were part of the BTMI um, um, function that they had for, for the night before we returned. And that was really exciting. We met more persons there, um, as well as um, tourists from other countries who wanted to learn about the program in Barbados. And we told them about the program and they understood the program and they were excited about the program. And they are curious about the program here in Barbados that is so unique to this country. So we had a grand time. Of course, we already know that St. Lucie was in winner's role again in 2022. Later in the series, we will meet Paul Cato and Chloe Collimore, the new most outstanding parish ambassadors. And we also take a look at the winners of the parish talent competition. Of course, we invite persons with talent to step forward and register for the 2023 parish talent competition. The Division of Youth Affairs in the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment is a research-driven agency engaging in ongoing dialogue with its constituents of young persons ages 15 to 29 years. One of its major gathering tools is the National Youth Survey. Youth Commissioners are currently in the field meeting and conducting interviews. The National Youth Survey is being conducted by the Youth Development Program in the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment. The survey started in April and will run for six months, ending in October 2023. Our target population is youth between the ages of 16 and 29. The National Youth Survey provides an opportunity for young people to make inputs into areas in which they are affected and utilizes an approach to youth empowerment where young people are consulted and engaged as partners in national development efforts. The National Youth Survey therefore aims to gain insight into some of the issues being experienced by the Barbadian youth population, such as housing, unemployment and education, especially to those living in difficult circumstances and or with special needs. The data analysis will be pivotal in guiding national strategies and program interventions that respond to these youth challenges securing their participation in government and decision-making, youth recreation, positive development and the involvement of young people in safe and secure communities in a society free from violence. The Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment invites all young people to actively participate in the data collection process as our aim is to engage youth in providing the structural reforms needed to improve the conditions of young people. Our youth commissioners are already in the communities and easily identified, and they all carry identification cards. You are free to call us at the ministry at 525-3835 if you have any queries. 
The Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment is calling all young people in Barbados between the ages of 16 and 29 to participate in its National Youth Survey. The survey, which runs from April to October 2023, seeks to gain insight into the interests, aspirations, and needs of Barbadian youth. Young people are encouraged to engage the youth commissioners when they visit and make their voices heard. For more information, call 535-3835 or email sharon.bishop at barbados.gov.bb. This location recently held the graduation ceremony of the Youth Achieving Results Performing and Visual Arts Program. We learn more about this program from Coordinator and Youth Commissioner Carolyn Garns. Achieving Results Program is one of the youth programs within the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment. It is divided into two sections and caters to young people between the ages of 16 to 35. There's the performing arts and the visual arts. In the performing arts you have dance, drama and voice training. The visual arts program includes garment making, basketry, um, ceramics, pottery, just to name a few. These programs are for six months and at the end of the six months we do a production where we can showcase what they would have learned and reward those who would have excelled in the program. We also look at excelling with the tutors as well and we have a core of qualified tutors within the program. To get involved in the Youth Achieving Results program you can contact your youth commissioner or you can come to the Ministry of Youth Sports and Community Empowerment in Sky Mall, or you can even send us an email at ydp at barbados.gov.bb. I know i um, looking forward to passing my music at CIC as a vocalist, and in the future I will love to do theatre and other big shows using my singing, acting, and dancing skills. It's a nice program. Teachers, very in tune, and they can also help with Social anxiety. As a good program, you can learn, you can benefit, you can like it. I was a little nervous, but it wasn't bad. I, I grew up on stage, so it was alright after I got my nerves out. They got Nifka, they got Spirit Nation, they really got dark school, so I just like it to get into these sort of things. It was a good show, everybody did their thing, everybody came up and did their best. So it was actually good to see the youngsters doing their thing and I believe next time it will be even better. From the time I was young, I've always loved movement and dancing. But as the years went on, I took what I thought was a practical approach to work and career. But there was a void, a hole, something was, something was missing. Then I had my little girl and I decided to leave my job stay home and to take care of her and I stumbled upon something artistic that could also help me to make money that was jewelry I took a four-week basic wire bending class from Aziza and I fell in love with jewelry making a friend who was also a tutor at the YAR program came to tell my brother about it and she thought he could really benefit from it. But when I heard all the things that it was offering, I decided to register. I joined the visual arts section of the program, which had bag making, it had jewelry making, and also personal development. But what was so great about this program was the fact that it was not only giving you a skill, but it was helping you to develop your self-awareness, um, just being grounded in who you are as a person and building your confidence. I mean, just all in one. Through the Youth Achieving Results Program, I was encouraged to join the Crop Over competition with a jewelry piece entitled Royalty, where I got an honorable mention. I went on to start my business called Beoba Beauty, and I use jewelry as my medium to inspire others to express their soul's passion. 
Then I went on to join the YES program, which helped me to understand and develop a successful business. Where I got a great opportunity then to go to Guan to Girlfriends Expo. The next year, I joined the performing arts section of the YAR program, where I did voice training, I did dancing, I did drama, and again, personal development. This ignited a part of me that I, that I ignored for such a long time. But through youth achieving results, I was connected with who I always was as an artist. I am now obtaining my associate's degree in dance at the BCC program. Now when I tell my little girl that she can do anything in the world, I know that I am following my own advice. To Yar, I thank you. Words could never do justice to the impact that you have made on my life. And to youth who want to start their journey, you can start it with the Youth Achieving Results Program. It is worth it. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Daniel Roberts, and I'm a graduate of the Youth Achieving Results 2022. Now, the reason I joined the YAR program was because I wanted something interesting to do. And I must say that the theater arts and dance component was an enjoyable experience. I was never a fan of dancing. However, you know, Miss Geraldine Lynch had a different idea. She observed me and in every possible way corrected my movements and made sure every one of her students were comfortable. You know, something a mother would do. But don't ever get she vexed. Are them exercises she again? They make you sweat like rain. You ever hear about Winston Farrell? Me neither. Well, he was my theater art student who, through his old time teachings, expressions, and different character personalities, really showed his passion for the game. You know, I didn't even know there were different areas on stage. You know, our positioning is very important for the audience and for the camera. Early this year, the YAR program held its graduation at the Daphne Joseph Hackett Theater. Congratulations to all. Barbados, we have a wealth of talent and skills among our youth population. Let's continue to support them. The ministry commenced its anti-violence campaign a couple years ago with a multimedia youth-led call for an end to violence. Using dance, spoken word, inspirational remarks and short film, the young people express their views and positions on the violence. People have gone insane So much death and so much pain I hope another brother don't have to fall Cause any of this violence can save us all Down in the city, end the violence You gotta show pity, end the violence Up in the wood, just end the violence Boy, you can't be so brutal, just end the violence Surviving on the block, just end the violence Boy, you don't need no block, just end the violence Ain't no need to be so intense Cause being angry just don't make no sense no need to be so intense Cause hurting people just don't make no sense No need for you to seek revenge Cause killing your brother don't make no sense What you say? Man, it don't make no sense Say it again Man, it don't make no sense The ministry remains open and willing to work with agencies, groups and individuals who are engaging the anti-violence campaign Hi, I'm Clemson Hunt, Director of Youth Affairs and I invite you to support us on the journey as we put programs and activities in place to reduce the level of violence in our lives and in the communities in which we live. It was during 2021 that the Ministry launched our anti-violence campaign. And for the past two years, we have embarked on a number of programs to raise awareness of violence in our society, promote behavioral change, and assist young people to internalize nonviolent ways of doing things, or simply by just saying no to violence, as a means of ending the violence now, as our slogan goes. Over the past two years, the ministry have had youth from different communities expressing themselves in a variety of art forms. You would have seen our community messaging in the form of bus shelters and benches, and already in several locations, including Warrens, QEH, Oystein, Six Rose, and Haggard Hall. 
We have also had some youth sharing their views and made calls for behavior change through our Give Me the Peace on the Mic chanting competitions, as well as using spoken word, essay writing, art, jingles, and our parenting programs. Our ministry also worked with a team of youth, including students from the Barbados Community College, to do a series of short films targeting violent acts, including those that overlook emotional violence and discrimination. As we move into the next stage of our anti-violence campaigning, our messaging will be on featuring community morals. We will also continue to promote our specific anti-violent social media pages on Facebook and Instagram to keep the conversations going. We will also be providing more face-to-face -face psychoeducational programs in communities, as well as another component of our parenting program. We therefore invite you to join us as we work collaboratively to end the scourge of violence now. Violence not good for this country It's depressing and hurting you and me Violence not good for this country Time for change and rearrange socially No, we don't need it Last segment for this week, meet the newly appointed CARICOM Youth Ambassadors, Ashley Lashley and Shaquem Howell. The duo will represent Barbados in the CARICOM Youth-led program on advocacy, education, integration and community empowerment. Deeply honoured that I was selected as CARICOM Youth Ambassador. I'm super excited to get started into the role and um, one thing that I would do, especially as a CARICOM Youth Ambassador, having held the title also as UNICEF Youth Advocate, is to ensure that the rights of our children and young people across the region continues to be protected. But also I think it is important in this role to hold myself accountable. The CARICOM Youth Ambassadorial team, stakeholders and policy makers as well, to ensure that the issues that are affecting us as young persons are being seriously addressed. And some, I like that you mentioned outside of my comfort zone because what I was thinking about it, I know everyone sees Ashley and sees Save the Planet. So I was, <laughs> thinking, I was thinking about different ways in which I can continue to engage young people, especially from a grassroots and community perspective. So the projects in which I'm hoping that the team um, would be implementing during this tenure would be more community driven and community oriented and some areas in which I will personally like to focus on that is going to be outside my comfort zone would be youth living with disabilities, youth unemployability, as well as um, starting possibly a community um, a community garden as a across the varying urban communities in Barbados as well. So those are some areas that I have identified and I'm sure the other young persons who are present in my team today also have other, a major of uh, topics that they would also like to address to ensure that everything is cognizant and fits in alignment with the ministry as well. So again, thank you and I'm super excited to get started. Humbled and very appreciative of being selected and appointed to the role of CARICOM Youth Ambassador. And today is with great privilege that I am joined by experienced young professionals who are committed to championing youth development, not just in Barbados, but across the region. And with that said, I am looking forward to commitment furthering our collective efforts towards not just cultural development in the region, but the upliftment of this CYA program for another 30 years. And having our meetings together for the last few weeks with our regional stakeholders, and in discussions with Ashley, early morning at five o'clock, six o'clock, and having the phone calls as early as trying to be able to figure out where do we go from here after we have finally received our phone calls and we have finally received our letters. How do we continue to empower the next generation of young people for tomorrow? We have determined that not just the community is a place that we need to uplift, but we need to engage our micro societies. And I really commend the efforts of the ministry so far in terms of tackling crime and violence, 
we too as CARICOM Youth Ambassadors will seek to do our part to be able to join that cause as we've just recently concluded our, our summit discussing violence across the region where several of our Prime Ministers and Heads of Governments would have shared their concerns about these issues and the endemics that are taking place across our Caribbean communities. Additionally, we seek to also empower young people by having days of activism, where we can engage young people in a meaningful light, not just throughout the communities, but within the micro-societies which are our schools, being able to ensure that they're empowered with the skills to take on the workforce of tomorrow and be ready for job success. Collectively, we as the CARICOM Youth Ambassadors will support the new National Youth Policy in its entirety and ensure that every single project, including the National Youth Survey which is currently being executed, are able to be mirage and blended in one common unity. I thank you. The CARICOM Youth Ambassadors program was first introduced in 1993 and that's it for this week's program. Remember, you can visit us at our respective online locations on Instagram, stay in touch with the Community Development Department at ComDev Barbados, the Division of Youth Affairs at Div Youth 246, the Sports Development Unit at sportsdevelopment.bb, the National Sports Council at NSC Barbados, Community Independence Celebration Secretariat at Community Independence 246, and the Barbados Youth Advance Corps at Barbados Youth Advance. You can also stay connected on Facebook by visiting the Community Development Department, the Division of Youth Affairs, the National Sports Council and the Community Independence Celebration Secretariat. Next week we will learn more about the Barbados National Youth Parliament, the National Sports Council Outdoor Gyms and much more. See you then.